Um, I got notified that there was an altercation in the pods out back. I, at the time, I had no idea who was involved. It was just there was a fight. They needed me to respond to the pods. When I got there, the school administration had, and teachers had already broken up the fight. They had the two girls separated in two different classrooms. Um, I talked to each of the girls. I talked to witnesses that were involved uh, to get information about what actually happened with the fight. Based off the information that I received and the, the disturbance that it caused in the hallway, at that time I felt it was necessary to charge both of the girls with uh, being involved in a, a fight. And the way that this even came to my attention was I got a phone call one day from one of my previous students who had been through our program and she now works in the Public Defender's Office. And she said, uh, I have been assigned to defend a young lady who got in a pretty serious fight over at, well she didn't say over at Broughton High School, but ultimately I learned it was over at Broughton High School. Um, she said, naturally she was arrested and I'm defending her. There's, a, there's another a co-defendant. Uh, that somebody else is defending. And she said, as soon as I looked at the facts of the case, I felt like this case doesn't need to be prosecuted. This case should go through the mediation process. And of course, since she'd been one of my students, she knew that the mediation process existed. A lot of the public defenders don't even know that it exists because we do operate uh, mainly within the juvenile court system. And these young ladies were older than juveniles. They were 17 and 18 years old. So they were arrested and sent into the adult system, which happens when 16, 17, 18 year old high school kids get in a fight and get arrested there in the adult system, which is much more serious as far as their record concerns and what their future, how their future is gonna be impacted. So Cheris Link was the public defender. She called me and told me about it. I said, well, I really appreciate you thinking about that. And, um, and she had already talked to the prosecutor in charge and the prosecutor agreed that mediation would be a good thing because she was aware of our program in the juvenile court. And so they were agreeable to send it out. I said, the problem is we don't have local rules within the adult system to provide confidentiality, voluntariness, all the things that we're able to provide in the juvenile court. So I said, tell me where it happened. She said, well, it happened in school. I said, which school? She said, Broughton. I said, okay, we have an agreement with Broughton. And so we can provide the protections if it comes from Broughton. So I said, how about talk to the school resource officer that handled the case and see if he will send it as a referral from Broughton. And so that's exactly what happened. I guess it was like over a boy and then tension just rise from there and it hit like skyrocket. It was, it, yeah, it was like, it. It was built up anger, I guess. So, earlier that day, not earlier, right before fourth period, we got into like an argument outside and I walked away from it and just like left it alone. And then towards the end of fourth period, I was outside in the hallway and she came out of her class. Our classrooms were right next to each other, like right there next to each other. So when she came out, I saw her and she went to the bathroom. So like I followed her to the bathroom, not to fight her, just to like talk to her about it because I didn't want to wait to get into the bus loop where all our friends were and they would hype it up and then go completely left. But it still ended up going completely left and we ended up fighting. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It started right here. here. I was about to use the bathroom and she stopped me from using the bathroom. Because I wanted to talk to her and it, like at first it started off well, but I think because our, my friend Cameron was like right there because we were in the same class. I think him standing there just made it like. Seem like that you were coming. Yeah, like me. I was coming because he was like, don't do that. And then I'm like, what are you talking? I'm not doing anything. Like, it just made it sound like I was coming to fight her. So it went from here. Like, it like here. came from here and, and we this like girl failed. ran out of the bathroom stall and was like why are y'all fighting and da, da 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 and she like darted out the bathroom she was in my class so mm -hmm. and then we like came got, i don't know how we got out here but it came like all over here cameron had closed the door before the girl ran out and when she ran out she opened the door and left it open because i guess he didn't want us to get in trouble because there's cameras out here and no cameras in there yeah. so nobody would have known if we were fighting so. yeah 
But I don't even know if we were still fighting if we would have broke up. True. Okay. Well, just keep, just go, like, just it went here, and then it went there. And, and then it went here. For like, we were on the minute. ground for a good uh -huh. minute. And then it went over here. Over here. And then, and then it, it went came back over, back over here. here. <laughs> and then all the way over here into the classroom. Because the door was open. And then we came over here. And we stopped right here. And that's when it broke up. So we went to the school, and uh, let me back up a little bit. This fight happened almost at the very end of last school year. Um, we got the referral late in the summer. So the second day of school, this new school year, we were there to meet with these girls. And so we did what we always do. We met with one of them privately, uh, me and two of my students, and we give them a chance to understand who we are, uh, how we might be able to meet their needs, give them a chance to talk about what happened and why as much as they know because they never have the whole story. The other side has the rest of the story. Uh, give them a chance to help us understand how they've been affected by this and how others have been affected by it. And then to start talking about what needs to be done to make things right and to get back to, to a good place with each other. Have that meeting with both sides privately to begin with. Um, during those meetings, we also talk a lot about who they are. What are they dealing with at home? What are their aspirations for the future? And as it turns out, both of these young ladies have dealt with uh, some significant difficult issues uh, outside of school in their own private lives. As mediators, we began to understand that they had a lot of things in common that they did not understand they had in common. And so when we brought them together, we were able to lead them in a conversation not only about what had happened and why it had happened and how they'd been affected and what they want to do about it, but who are they as human beings. And they began to realize they had an awful lot in common. One of the beautiful things that happened in mediation was that uh, Sienna was working at McDonald's at the time and uh, Tori was looking for a job and Sienna, after they had reconciled, Sienna said, why don't I put in a good word for you at McDonald's and see if we can get you a job? And we said, working with you? And she said, yeah, that'd be cool. Now that never happened because Sienna wound up going somewhere else that was better for her. Uh, but she still is offering to help Tori get a job and, and work together with her. Okay, we met with Mr. Powell. She met with him, Tori met with, met with Mr. Powell first. And then I met with him and it was it was good. We were separated each time. Like we met twice separately, right? Yeah, we met twice separately. And then the third time, like right after my second meeting, me and her had to meet together. And I was just like, and you could ask him. I was like, oh my gosh, like do I really have to do this? I don't want to do this. And then it turned <laughs> out really good. We had to sit directly across from each other which was pretty like hard because it was just like so much tension and it was like I was trying to like while I was talking to her I was trying to give direct contact but then at the same time it was just like you don't uh, want to stare somebody in the face like yeah. while you're talking to them especially if you're not like on good terms good ter yeah so it was, it was like really I was awkward. like when we were talking we weren't we would look at each other and then we would like look away like <laughs> just like I don't know we, we had to explain a lot about why we were upset, what happened and Yeah. Had to give you had to give my side of how I viewed it and then she had to give her side of how she viewed it and yeah. We ended up apologizing and I told Mr. Powell that I was not going to like tell personal business and cry and everything else and it ended up happening anyway and it just yeah. I think that's like what made it even like more it, like worked out even better because mm -hmm. we were going through the same things and we wouldn't have ever known that if it wasn't for that. So yeah, we were like more alike than we knew yeah. at that time. To me, the most important work that we do in our process is to help them make that human connection. Especially in the conflict resolution, which is mainly what we're doing in school cases. We're going in to help to resolve conflict so that the kids don't have the suspensions so that they don't have the petitions into the court system and so that they're not disrupting the educational day in, in, the, in the school year. Um, they do make human connections and when you 
can help that happen, that's when you see the conflict begin to fall away. It becomes the least important thing that's in the room. And the most important thing becomes the human beings that are now making that human connection. It's critically important, I think, in the mediation process. Yeah, when we're talking about the school to prison pipeline, this is exactly what we're talking about. These kids had an altercation at school. They were arrested, <laughs> sent into the criminal justice system. So school to prison pipeline. Um, if this program did not exist, they would have stayed in the criminal justice system and the system would have dealt with them in some way. It might have wound up in a conviction that would have been a permanent part of their record. I hope that what would have happened would be that the court would have seen fit to put them in a diversion program to let them do some community service and whatever else is in the program and then actually dismiss the criminal charges, but we don't know what would have happened. What did happen was they were diverted away from the criminal justice system and they were put into a mediation process that ultimately ended with them reconciling, with the school being satisfied with everything that happened, with them no longer causing any disruption in the school, and their charges being dismissed. So that's what happened. We, we reached in and we snatched them out of that system. And so we, we snatched them out of the school to prison pipeline. And I think that is significant. And I, I wish that every jurisdiction in the state and in the country had the ability to do that. When we talk about interruptions to the school to prison pipeline, I think that case is a great example of how we can interrupt that school to prison pipeline and, and begin to dismantle that school to prison pipeline. I don't feel like we would, I mean, one wouldn't have started a dance team together. Yeah. And two, when did we start? Oh, that's actually the same day that we sat down and talked to each other. We had English together and we sat next to each other in English and we were just talking because we're both no seniors. Yeah, we were both just like talking about senior year and how we wanted to do everything. And we were like, yeah, we want to perform for Queen of Hearts, which is bigger than homecoming at our school. And like we both danced, so we were just like, yeah, we'll just dance together for Queen of Hearts. It was the same day as the mediation, which mm -hmm. was like ironic. And then, yeah, it just went from there. Like we were with each other pretty much with each other every day. It appears to be successful. I think the two girls have uh, benefited from the program. They seem to be friends now. I don't know if they're hanging out all the time or not. You could ask them, but I think they do stay in communication with each other and they are friendly to each other.